and welcome to Theorycraft, the channel in which movie reviews are a little less a little less pedantic and a lot more nitpicky. For today's review, it is the Marvel What If TV series. Ben and welcome to the show. So the Marvel What If series is Basically, what the comic book counterpart is, where it's more in terms of a test bed of ideas of possibilities within comics that could or may not work as an alternate story or an alternate universe down the line. For most of the episodes, it's been quite interesting how one minor moment can drastically change said universe. Say, for instance, Steve Rogers never becoming Captain America. It is instead Peggy Carter. Very great choice, couldn't go wrong. Unless, of course, you add in the idea that he became, for whatever reason, a very bulky pre-version of Iron Man because his dad, sorry, not his dad, but Howard Stark, decides to build him a giant mech suit, which was really cool, don't get me wrong, I thought it was brilliant, but it just added more complications to the episode than it needed to do. And of course, at the beginning we just assumed that all these episodes were going to be one and done, they're going to be interlinked, well, weren't going to be interlinked in so much as being a defined universe, but just random stories throughout different universes. Until we got this week's episode, which was, of course, What If Ultron Won? So, of course, in this universe, Ultron basically takes control of everything, blows up pretty much most of humanity, and destroys Earth to finally find peace, because that's what he believes is peace, is by destroying humanity. I mean, sure, we are pretty stupid, but there we go. The only thing that I found a bit rushed in this idea of Ultron becoming even more powerful was just how it was just the fact that Thanos just appeared on Earth with the majority of the stones, Ultron saw it and went, ooh, shiny, and just literally spliced them in half and took the stones for himself. There wasn't much of a battle, and I don't know, I mean, yes, Ultron is pretty powerful, but so is Thanos. I mean, he had like five out of six Infinity Stones. Surely he could have done anything to put up a bit more of a fight than to literally just be spliced in half the second that Ultron saw him. But again, this is just my opinion. Now, what I did find fascinating was how he was able to perceive the Watcher with the Infinity Stones. It wasn't explained any further, which was a bit frustrating, but it was a very interesting plot point, because Marvel have said in their comic universe, quite recent as well, I believe it was last year, that the Infinity Stones only work in their said universes. So with that in mind, I'm quite curious as to, obviously, the Watcher being in a pocket universe, seeing reality as like a shard of like shattered glass, how was Vision, sorry, Vistron or Ultron, whatever you want to go by, was able to perceive Uatu with just the Infinity Stones. Yes, he may be a mechanical mind and he is an AI that's able to detect anomalies, I suppose, but it, it would require a lot more than just being able to hold the Infinity Stones all together shortly to be able to detect an outside force of reality. I mean, we had the Dark Doctor Strange, which was able to detect him purely because he was obtaining more and more power, because it's more of a mythic cosmic thing than it is purely the fact that, yes, I know the Infinity Stones are a cosmic thing, but it's still begs the question as to how and why Ultron was able to see Uwatu. It was a very interesting fight scene, and I, I'm still trying to struggle as to 
if Owatu is unable to purple fight against him, then what is the group that he's going to obviously make out of this random assortment of people from the multiverse? Captain Carter, got obviously Black Panther as Star Lord, and various other characters, I'm sure, along the way. What exactly are their, their parts going to play to defeat Ultron? The only slight help is obviously that we got Armin Zola in an Ultron body, but again, it's... I don't know, it's one of these things that I hate when they leave it on cliffhangers. I know it will be said and done by next week, but it's very frustrating to understand where the writers are trying to go with the whole concept of Vistron, because... If he is so starkly powerful, then what is going to stop him? I mean, you need something as powerful as the combination of Ultron and Vision and the Infinity Stones for it all to stop, basically. And the only person that I thought would have stopped it would be Owatu, because he is stupidly powerful. But he got his ass whooped pretty easily by... Ultron. So, what exactly is he going to achieve if nobody in the team that he's combining with the vast random people from the multiverse? If anything, it I feel like it's going to be one of these just random side notes that it's just convenient that at the end of the day they got defeated. But I don't know. I mean, it's been an amazing series to watch. I'm glad that the majority of the MCU actors did come back to voice certain characters. I just don't know how they're actually playing the whole concept of defeating Ultron Vision or Vistron or whatever you want to call him. But there we go. That's my little rant for today. I mean, if anyone's got any ideas, please drop them in the comments down below. And again... If you have any ideas, drop us a message. We have our socials down below. Hopefully Jack will be joining me soon in the future. He's just dealing with some things, which is understandable. But for the moment, you're having to stick around for me, I'm afraid, folks. So, thanks for watching. And again, see you soon. <laughs>